Eddie Millerick probably is a coach's dream. His character and what he brings to the field and to the team makes our job easy. He made coaching easy, uh, very good morals, very, very, very strong work ethic. I've never in my life seen anybody work harder than Eddie Millerick. I think this honor is very deserved and I love Ed Miller and I'm just so happy that he's in the Hall of Fame, it's great. It was kind of funny because the first time I met him, we were out on fall ball at Santa Rosa JC and he came up to me, hey coach, how you doing? And he had his hair done like this, hey, how you doing? He looked like howdy doody and I'm going, oh my God, who's this guy, you know? His teammates would say that Ed was a fun guy, well liked, very well liked by his teammates. Um, Real uh, easy going off the field, really hard nosed on the field, got along well with everybody, was a fun guy, uh, quick to smile and laugh. And then we put him on the mound and all of a sudden something switched in him and it was competitive. And you, can, you, can, you knew right then and there, this is gonna rub off on everybody else. I think Eddie was really, Eddie's really a competitive guy. I went and saw him play at the JHC, he played for uh, Coach Ronnie Myers is a hard worker, um, uh, real gritty guy, uh, pitched well in the clutch, liked, liked the ball in big games. Eddie started the game that uh, we got in a big fight with Dominguez Hills. Thanks, Eddie, for that. Uh, but just a tough, uh, you know, hard nosed competitor, played on two championship teams, I believe, during the time that he was, uh, he was there. and. Um, you know, he was our ace. And Eddie was never a real loud leader. Believe it or not, he just led by example. I mean, he worked harder than anybody else ever did. He always pumped up somebody. Somebody made an error. Eddie's the one that went in and patted him on the butt and said, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, I have some great stories. I probably can't tell all of them, but uh, a couple of ones that I really do like and I've never told Eddie this, but I used to uh, go down to the bullpen before games every time Eddie was going to pitch. And uh, the coaches at the time, Mike Trainer and Mark Fobian, I uh, walked back from the bullpen and Eddie would be warming up to come into the game and they would say, how do you look? And I would go, oh my God, he looked just horrible. His fastball wasn't very good. His breaking ball wasn't sharp. I go, you know, we, we got to have a guy ready to come in and, uh, and uh, bail Eddie out because he doesn't look very good today. I probably did that almost every start that uh, Eddie had, and uh, with that said, he went on to be an All-American. I can remember one start against San Francisco State, he looked awful in the bullpen, and after uh, seven innings, seven and two-thirds innings, he had a no-hitter, and uh, they took him out of the game. We had a fight about that, and I think we wound up with a one-hitter. Every time he towed up on that mound, he competed 110%, and everybody knew it, and he made everybody else better because he competed so hard, so did everybody else. And it gets contagious, you know, it's like when the Giants won the World Series, they were not the best team that year. But they had that chemistry and they won the whole dang thing. And Eddie was the same guy. You get that one catalyst and it's contagious and it takes over the whole team. And it's just like you get that one guy on your team that's a cancer, that'll kill your team too, it'll do the same thing. But Eddie had a profound effect on anybody that was on the ball field with him because he competed so hard and worked so hard and was so driven. It was amazing. It was just fun to watch. It was a lot of fun to watch. And you knew that day when he got the ball for the JC or Sonoma State, you're gonna win that day. Ed, Ed was really that core group of guys from around this area that kind of put us on the map and made it a lot easier to draw players from uh, Southern California and from all sorts of other places. I mean, we went from being you know, ranked in the top um, you know, 25 to having that be a really big deal to uh, Eddie's teams having us ranked in the top 15 or top 10. And then, um, you know, the local, uh, we just, it just put us on the map. It just gave us a more, uh, a bigger base to recruit from. I can honestly tell you, meeting Eddie Miller has made my life better. It's made me a better person. And I can't really say that about a whole lot of people. And I'm very, very proud to say that, and I truly mean it with all my heart. And he just had a wonderful career at Sonoma State. I can't say enough good things about what uh, Eddie did for our program, and I'm really proud of him, really excited that he's in our Hall of Fame. The best compliment I could give Eddie, and the best compliment I could give his mom and dad, who I know very well and got to be friends with also through this whole you know, coaching career at Santa Rosa JC, was um, 
I've got three boys of my own. Those people did such a good job of raising their son that it inspired me. If my three boys can end up being a man like Eddie Miller gives, I'm going to be the happiest man alive. And I love those boys so much I could not give Eddie a bigger compliment than that or his folks. And that's the kind of guy this guy is. This is what he means to me. I'd just like to congratulate you, Eddie, on uh, being voted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I think it's a great honor, and I think the acorn doesn't fall too far from the tree. You had a great family, and you're always one of my favorite players. More than anything, you know what? He means so much to me, and probably that night when he gets the award, I'm probably going to cry. And if I was on that podium and I had to look at him, I'd probably cry. And the worst part about that whole thing is that John Geltz would be the first one to yell out, Dan Leslie's a b